Hello, hello. So, patch 3.0 has been out for around a month and a half at this point. It means it's time to solidify a tier list. This is mostly for domination mode. Um, I am not an expert in land battles, so this domination mode. Just what I've come to see performance-wise from all the factions over the past month or so that we've had this patch. So, getting started, we have the Beastmen. Beastmen have been feeling pretty good on this patch. They didn't get any direct buffs that come to mind. Uh, I guess Best Scores got a little buff, that's not a huge deal. Um, it's more a matter of things they're struggling against got nerfed. Oh, some of those chaos factions that were really oppressive against them, that kind of just did what they did better. Um, yeah, a lot of just the big heavy hitters, you know, unless Vampire Counts all got nerfed. Which kind of just opened up the way for them to shine. So they've been having a really, really good time, especially since we've come into more of a shooting heavy meta. They're very, very fast and aggressive and good at shutting down those shooting factions, also denying them a lot of good targets. So they are pretty solidly in A tier this patch so far, I feel. Having a lot of good success with them. They do really well against a lot of the kite styles we've been seeing a lot of, and they can rush some of the more defensive quite a bit. Next we have Bretonia. They are in a similar vote to Beast, but I think I'm put them in the A tier. Their cav has felt really, really good this patch when the knockdown changes, so their charges are a little more consistent, as well as the consecutive buffs they've gotten over the past handful of patches, their cav are hitting like absolute trucks. And top, on top of that, they now have, what, Battle Pilgrims got a 50 gold uh, cost reduction, so now you have 550 gold Battle Pilgrims with Growl Reliques, making them almost impossible to route. They're practically unbreakable. You have a really, really solid front line, backed up by really heavy hitting cav, then you have your same old solid hero core of, you know, Fae and her paladins. They've been doing really, really solid. There's not a lot of factions that can deal with all those peasants backed up by that heavy-hitting calf. So I think Brett's solidly in A tier. This Next up, we have Chaos Dwarves. And these guys go right here. Chaos Dwarves are hands down the best faction in the game right now, mostly because of all their buggy units. The big ones being Bull Centaur Renders just can't be shot effectively. Their hitboxes are a little bit buggy. They're not taking proper damage from missile attacks, and they just massively overperform in melee. So it's very, very hard to take a cost-effective trade into bull centaurs as any faction, which is very, very strong. <clears throat> you also have magma cannons, which are just the best artillery piece in the game right now. They're super cheap at like what, like 900, and they hit really, really hard against a variety of targets. They they one-shot most infantry at like 450 range. They do good work against Cav, they do good work against Monsters Infantry, they are incredibly strong. Uh, they also got the bug capture rate on the Noblar Goblin Laborers and Orc Laborers, which means you can cap points for very, very cheap, which allows you to spend more money on those elite things, your Bull Centaur Renders, your Magma Cannons, that kind of thing, without sacrificing your capture rate. And then if you really wanted to, you also have Astrogoth, just an absolute beast for his price. He's not bugged to my knowledge, he's just massively undercosted and has an absurd amount of mass and he trades very for one of those things. And like even aside from the bug things, their shooting is really, really good with the Infernal Guard Iron Glaives. Their blasting charges are amazing. Their infantry is really high quality. Skirmish Cav isn't bad. Like they just have so many things going for them. This is their meta right now. They they define the meta right now. To the point that a lot of tournaments are banning them out or restricting uh how many of those bug units you can bring. Dark Elves. Dark Elves are in a bit of a weird spot. They did get nerfed this patch in some ways. Their infantry took a lot of hits. Their damage went down quite a bit. Uh, they lost, what, like 3 AP damage on most of their infantry. Malekith got a nerf, but the Supreme Sorceress also got a buff, so she basically does what Malekith does on a dragon for a lot cheaper. Um, Scourge Runners got bug fixed. They're not double firing, which makes their kite style quite a bit weaker, not having that anti-large punching power. The Dark Elves have taken a pretty severe hit patch, and I think I put them in, in B tier after all those nerfs. They're still solid. Um, their infantry line is still pretty good. Their missiles don't feel quite as good. There's not as many melee rush factions being as prevalent, so that handbow kite style isn't super relevant anymore, and it does get outshot by any kind of missile faction. You can't do that. Like Dark Elf missiles, aside from Scourge Runners, they all just get outshot by more dedicated missile factions. So they've been forced into a rush style more often than not, and they're they're okay at it, but they're not as good as like the beast men of the onion. Demons of Chaos. Demons of Chaos. They're in a rough spot. Um last patch they were really thriving off of 
Bellacore and Fleshhounds carrying them. Both of those took big hits. Bellacore got a pretty big cost increase, as well as I think his leadership aura got reduced, and I think it got reduced. I'm not even sure on that. And Fleshhounds got a pretty big weapon strength reduction. Uh, they also they were thriving last patch because they did well into the other chaos factions, into the low shooting factions. But because they have such light armor, they don't have they have like one armor on the entire roster. All their infantry is light armor. All their characters are light armor. So having more shooting heavy factions in the meta, things like Bretonia, Chaos Dwarves, uh, some other stuff we'll get to later, they are just really struggling. Any faction with cheap archers is such a huge problem with them, and there's a lot of those. Match. Dwarves. Um to be honest, I haven't seen a whole lot of dwarves this patch, which leads me to believe that they're not doing so hot. Um, I'll put them in C tier for now, but I, I can see them being a little bit higher than that, but uh, mobility is still very, very strong this patch. Um, as well as mass, which dwarves just lack. They still suffer from the same old problems of they just can't get to objectives in time in the event that they can even value trade effectively, which with build-up being still an option is very, very difficult, because oftentimes your opponent can just sit back, build up, and then rush at you all at once, and even if the dwarves win that fight, it takes them so long to get back on the objectives that it's just very, very hard for them to actually scrap out a win. Dwarves just, yeah, they really can't hold objectives very effectively, and that's in the back in domination in a big way. The Empire. Empire has been doing very well this patch. Uh, I'm going to put them up in S tier. None of their buffs were super relevant. Uh, the only buffs I can think of is the Luminarch buff, which is a neat gimmick, but it's not that good. Um, it's more just a lot of things that they were struggling against got gotten rid of. They got nerfed really hard. Um, so they've just been freed up a lot. And I've been saying that kite styles and shooting heavy styles have been very, very prevalent. The Empire is what I'm talking about. Their grenade launcher and war wagon kite is devastating for most factions. Not a lot of things can deal with that combo. Of just oh demigriffs also got that. that's the other one, um yeah demigriffs and armored knights backing up grenade launchers and war wagons is an incredibly devastating combo that's very very difficult for most factions to deal with so like buna is almost required against empire just to try and delete some knights or some grenade launchers but the grenade launchers are cheap enough at only eight hundred you can just summon them in another minute or two you just gotta go for the knights which means you just gotta try and make an opening to get on the grenade launchers and just run away. So if you can't outshoot the Empire, you're in a you're in for a real bad time trying to actually catch their kite. So Empire, and they do actually do fairly well at shootouts as well. Their cannons are solid. Uh, the Black Lions or the Luminarch are both uh, also all right for shoot sniper artillery pieces. Things like Marcus Wolfart, kind of, of their cast. They have a variety of magic that can be used to sniper artillery or win shootouts. So they're hard to outshoot. They're hard to catch the kite. They're just in a very very solid position in this patch. Cathay is in a very similar way to dwar similar position to dwarves. Um but So Cathay Cathay's in a weird spot. I might put them in C with dwarves. They have the same problem that dwarves do where they have a hard time getting on points and staying on points. Um, and that they're very weak to your opponent just building up and going at you. The other thing is, last patch, they were actually kind of good at getting rushed by Chaos Factions. By Walk, by Slanesh, they actually had a decent time there. Um, they, they had some very potent anti-rush styles. But Cathay has no rush potential in itself. They have to be, they have to be winning a shootout. If they're against another shooting faction, they have to outshoot them. That's their only option. They have no capacity to rush their opponent. They have no capacity to kite their opponent. So if they cannot win a shootout, they lose. Straight up. And so that means if you're going against an empire, or sure, a dark elves, and more, more an empire or a chaos dwarves, you have to take like four cannons just to make sure you win that shootout. And sure, you, you may win the shootout, may not, depends on what your opponent invests. But your opponent has the option of not engaging the shit. They can just go wide infantry and rush you. Or they can go with the shootout and try to win the artillery fight. Like, the opponent has options and you don't. If they has one style, and it's extremely predictable. So, you can't really put them a whole lot higher. They're very much a one-trick pony. Everybody knows what they're going to do. 
it's not that difficult to counter. Greenskins. These guys have been surprising me quite a bit lately. Um, I think it was... Um, Houseplant and Kark have both been playing them quite a bit lately. I'm doing very, very well for them. I'm going to put them in 8th here. These guys have been doing crazy well. Um, the Vortex spell nerfs, the Pit of Shades, the Dwellers, that we've got over Pascal Patches, have meant that magic... Greenskin's lack of armor piercing magic, it doesn't feel as bad because no one else has them in ample supply for either. So now their magic by comparison feels a lot better with Wurzag, just giving you massive attack buffs to your entire army. And when you have just massive amounts of swarming infantry and squigs and boar boys, those melee attack buffs really, really add up, especially stacked with the law. They're kind of nasty. And on the big total tavern mod packs most, most tournaments are played on, they can really make use of. All their mobility tools as well as not being punished as much for their leadership because the edges of the map are further away the greenskins have been really thriving on this patch their ability to just swarm with cheap armor piercing mobility makes kiting them very very difficult and their chaff efficiency with warzak's melee tech buffs is incredible so greenskins are in a really good spot this patch high elves high elves they got their Loth and Seagull got nerfed by 50 gold, both variants, and, that's, and their War Lions got buffed a little bit. And War Lions actually in a pretty good spot. So, A or B? Um, that's A or B. I do with B. They definitely could be A tier. Um... I just haven't experimented with them quite enough to be confident putting them in A tier. They do struggle with some of the more swarmy elements, things like Bretonia Peasant Tide or a Greenskin Horde. Uh, just because they are a fairly elite faction, they just take time to chew through all that chaff and have a hard time you know, making progress moving forward when there's that many bodies being thrown at them. But they are still pretty solid. Their, art, their shooting is good, their infantry is solid, their cav is solid. And fairly Generalist faction, they do tend to play a little more defensive around their archers. I don't have a whole lot to say about high elves. They're, they're good against the kite factions because their archers have such massive range, they outshoot most kite tools. But they are pretty weak to artillery. So things like the Sunmaker or Magma Cannons still tear them apart, and that does hold them back a bit. Corn. So, like I said, Flesh Hounds got nerfed pretty heavily. And that was last patch corn were up here very solidly, um, largely on the back of flesh hounds. Flesh hounds gave them mobility dominance versus almost every other faction, which allowed their minotaurs and their warriors to really grind effectively without being shot to pieces or swarmed. Without that mobility dominance, you're just playing armored infantry with minos. Flesh hounds still exist, like they, they do okay, but they're not as dominant, which means that your opponent is much has a much easier time kiting you or protecting their backline and shooting you, which drops corn down a lot. I I also think corn's in C tier at this point. They're another one another one note faction where it's like, well they have one thing they do, they run at you. It's very predictable. You kinda know what corn is gonna do every time. And without that trump card on the flanks of the flesh hounds, it's a lot harder to pull off. <clears throat> Kislev. The last patch Kislev was absolutely down here. Complete garbage in the dump. This patch... I've heard they've been doing actually really... Um, I don't know if I'm confident of putting them in A tier, but they're definitely a solid B, B+. Um, their Zargar got buffed, which makes them a really, really nice like lawnmower infantry. The Pit of Shades nerfs means that you're not punished as much for going for those Zargar and actually bring them along. Um, the knockdown changes makes their calf and chariots perform a little bit better, so Kislev's actually pretty good all around. And again, their their magic didn't get nerfed, so by comparison, it's a lot better than it was because Pit of Shades got nerfed. Um, Ulrika isn't super prevalent in Domination. She's kind of pricey, and with Pit of Shades being nerfed, Shadows isn't that desirable. They tend to go just for more of the Ice or the what is it, Tempest. I, I can't remember the name before, but is of unique magic. They're both alright. Little Grom is very, very dominant in artillery duels, which means they have a hard time out shooting them. Uh, their sleds are solid for kiting. Cav is solid. 
didn't the Zargar do a good job mopping up. So yeah, they're pretty solid all around. I wouldn't say quite A tier, but they're definitely... Lizards. Lizards. Did Lizards get... I don't think Lizards got any substantial changes this To my knowledge. So, A or B. I'll put Lizards in A tier. They have a lot of roster depth, which allows them a lot of options. They have the capacity to both rush and kite. Their artillery play is pretty weak these days. Their, miss their big missile dinos aren't very good, but their kite is pretty solid against more melee-oriented factions. Their rush is pretty solid. Their big SE blobs are incredible. Shredder builds are still very, very prevalent. They can single-handedly beat Greenskins and Brett, I think, with Shred just the Shredder of Lustria. <laughs> like, it's that much of a problem for the those kinds of factions. Those low-leadership Swarm factions really, really struggle to deal with the Shredder. Or just Terrace ban from the Pterodons and Rip Crystals. Pterodons and Rippers make it very, very difficult to protect a gun line against Lizardmen. Then you have your solid, grindy uh, Saurus, supported by all the sk little skink shooting. Lizards are pretty solid all around right now. Norska! Norska is the last standing Chaos faction that didn't get nerfed from last patch. They have some of the best infantry in the game right now with Marauders. Their Marauders have the Rage mechanic, which makes them even better the longer they're in combat. Champions, despite their nerfs, are still really good. Champion Grey Opens got buffed. Champion Grey Opens are actually really, really good right now. Skin Wolves are solid anti-large mobility piece. Norska Ice Wolves and Skin Wolves as a combo is a very, very potent uh, flank control, so they can really dominate most other cav units. Hunter Javs are probably the best anti-large missile unit in the game, hands down. They Their damage potential is incredible. I've seen Hunter Javs pave themselves three or four times over if they're allowed to just sit and shoot at even armored targets. They just shred large targets like there's no tomorrow. Uh, you have solid magic choices. Your lords are kind of underwhelming, but you have the option to just take a, you know, like 200... Then you have Gold Lord and D summon him. So keep them. Mammoths got buffed, which is actually pretty nice. They have another nice big monster option. Vimir haven't really seen a whole lot of action. They've been buffed. They're okay. You don't see them a whole lot. It's mostly just that infantry grind with the uh, wolves and that hound support and then some jabs over the top. That's a really solid, really potent combo. They're another faction that doesn't have a ton of variety in what they do, but what they do is really solid. They still play pretty dominantly as a rush. They can kite, but. They're not the greatest at it. If you're playing against a corn faction or a faction that has to rush you, then sure they can do it, but it's not their forte. They're mostly just, you know, a straight up rush faction. Run in there, get the job done, and blast. Nurgle. Nurgle's got quite a few buffs. They got their Plague Toads buffed, they got their Plague Drones buffed. They still don't feel that good. The Toads getting buffed added to, um,. Their ability to fight Armored Cav, they do quite well there despite being anti-infantry. They do okay against infantry, but really they shine fighting Armored Cav. But they still don't have any actual dedicated anti-large units. So any kind of big single entity or monstrous unit is still a huge problem for them. They have very minimal shooting, so they can't really pull off any kind of kite style. Nurgle Grinders kind of suck. <laughs> they don't hit very often, they don't hit very hard. Sometimes, you know... They're, they're a very inconsistent unit. Sometimes they'll hit and they'll take half health off a unit. Nine times out of ten, they'll chip it for a very, very small amount of damage. So, they can't really kite. They can't really play a missile line. They have to just rush at you. And they just can't kill big things efficiently. They do okay against Cav these days, but they still can't catch any of the kiting styles that are stronger. And even their melee grind isn't that good, because all they do is survive. They, their damage output is just overwhelming. So, I think I've put it down here in the... I don't want to put them in D just yet, because they do have an absurd amount of healing, and with Festus and just a large amount of infantry, you can get extremely good chaff efficiency, but that chaff is still exploitable because you don't have the right support unit. Not quite D, but it's I can see. Ogres! My lord! The other terror of the meta right now. Ogres are solid the S tier. Knockdown changes and mass changes means that their ogre bulls trade so much better into everything infantry sized <clears throat> ogre bulls just plow through most spears right now their shooting is incredible their cav is incredible their healing is incredible 
their ogre bulls, like I said, they trade very, very well into everything. Flamestorm buffs actually help them quite a bit, because that means another chaff clear spell they can bring on a fire belly. They just trade well into most things. They're fat. Their entire army is really fast, so they can etch kite as well as kite themselves with lead belchers or scrap launchers very, very effectively. Yeah, they just there's not a lot of nuance to, to why ogres got good this patch. It's just that their their stuff all started trading better because of the knockdown changes. Infantry are taking damage more consistently on charges from large units, so everything just takes more damage from their stuff. Or you do more damage, you kill more things, you win more games. That simple. Skaven, the ratty boys have been doing very well this patch. An A tier. They have been leaning much more towards a Vermintide style, where you just have massive amounts of infantry buffed by power grab, so it trades very, very well, backed up by Rad Ogres and some kind of slingers, whether it's Night Runners or Skaven Slaves. Usually not gutter runners, they're kind of too expensive. Um, and then you'll have, here and there, you'll have a weapon team, you'll have a globe or a death globe or a Gisele, but mostly it's just large amounts of infantry backed up by Rad Ogres and Slingers and just dragging down any big expensive target with just focus fire from Slingers. Then you have Skrulk in the front line, who is just passive spamming Lore of Plague to just lower your enemy army's morale so you trade even better on the front line. It's really just about maximizing the efficiency of the massive amounts of clan rats you bring. So, yeah. Slanesh! Probably the biggest loser this patch. Last patch, they were the Undisputed Kings. They were the best faction in the game, hands down. Nowadays... Hellstrider nerfs hit them pretty hard, Marauder nerfs hit them pretty hard, and they're a very one-note faction. I'll put them down here. I think they're a little better than Nurgle, maybe if they as well. Their Chosen got buffed, and their Chosen are really, really good. Seekers are still okay, but you kind of do the same thing Horn and Nurgle do, where you're just you're very one-note, and you don't have the supporting elements in the mobility dominance anymore. And it's the same way Corn had, where the Flesh Hounds were dominant and that allowed their infantry and their Minotaurs to take good engagements. Now Slanesh doesn't have that mobility dominance anymore. They have a hard time getting their infantry where they want it to be without just getting torn apart by missiles or by cycle charging. So they have a hard time. These They're really reliant on the infantry. Just reliant on the heavy infantry and they don't have much else going for them. Their fiends, their monster infantry is not that great. One are okay. Their cav is expensive and squishy. Their characters do one thing and one thing only. Their, mon their demons are big and easy to shoot. The demon lords are all big and easy to shoot. Sigvald is okay. Like Sigvald's good, but he doesn't. He's not a hard carry. He's not like a Bellacor who will go fight for you. And their demons are just so squishy. Exalted demons are good. The basic ones not so much. The exalted demons do a lot of damage, but they're just so so squishy. Really hard to justify them. All right, Tomb Kings. Tomb Kings feel really good. I've been having a really good time with Tomb Kings this. I put them in A tier. Um, they still have incredible chaff efficiency with just all the healing their skeletons get, so they can win most frontline fights. They can actually beat Skaven, and I'm not sure if they beat Greenskin in that chaff efficiency battle. They have solid shooting through Shop to Great Bows and their Screaming Skull catapults. They have a little bit of trouble against cannon factions, so like the Empire, or um, the Empire Coast, or what's the other faction? The Thay. Um, they have trouble shooting them because their shot to are outranged pretty heavily, and are pretty vulnerable to that, and their catapults aren't nearly that long range, but they still have the option to rush. They are versatile in that way, where they can... They are actually pretty versatile in general. They can have a solid gun line with shot to bows and infantry, they can kite, their skeleton horse archers, and your Great bows can kite pretty effectively, or they can just go all out bone tied, maybe throw in some monsters and some chariots and rush. They're a very versatile faction with highly efficient chaff, good shooting, good monsters. Not, not a lot of bad things to say about Tomb Kings. Zinch. Zinch, Zinch, Zinch. Zinch has been nerfed pretty much every patch since they came out, and this patch has done them no great favors. D or D. I want to put them in. They're better, they're better than Doc. They're doing better than Demons of Chaos. But they feel so bad. 
Do they feel worse than Nurgle? No, no, they're better than Nurgle. We'll we'll put them up here. We'll put them up a bit. Um, their infantry is it's okay. It's a Chaos Warrior. It's Marauder. The Marauders suck. Their Chaos Warriors are okay. Their mobility is fine, but their mobility is almost all airborne, but has no capture weight. So if you're dedicating your money to Screamers and Furies to win mobility fights, you may win those fights, but you cannot take ground off of them. That's a big problem for. Their only solid, like, space holding unit is Chaos Warriors, which are fine, but they're not very plentiful and they're not very fast. They rely on shooting pretty heavily, and their shooting just. Horrors are fine against light armor, but they're useless against heavy armor. Flamers are really, really squishy. Soul Grinders are good, but they take too long to get their value out. So Zinx just has a really hard time removing armor from objectives. Any kind of armor is. Really, really difficult for Zinch. Any kind of strong mobility presence can be difficult for them. And uh, factions that have archers that have more than 150 range, which is High Elves, Wood Elves, Empire, uh, Escape not quite that long with their Slingers. But yeah, any of those factions do really, really well into their shooting, so. It's just in a rough spot. All the demons are really suffering this patch. Vampire accounts. Another one got, that got hit pretty hard. All their healing got gutted. But they're still doing alright. I'll put them in B tier. They're in a solid spot. Um, their mobility stools are still very strong. Their characters are still very, very strong. White kings on horses are an absolute menace for most factions to deal with. Um, and their infantry is slow and grindy and hard to kill. But not as oppressive as it was. They're in a solid spot. I wouldn't say they're OP by any means. They can still have teeth, especially when played by one of the many Vampire Count specialists we have floating around the community. Vampire Coast. Speaking of gutted factions, right down here with you. So they got a pistol range. The range of pistol mobs got nerfed substantially. Uh, Silostra summon got nerfed, so it does no, longer has, no longer has lance formation. And those two things alone really, really hurt Coast. Because what Coast has always been weak to, aside from last patch, was cheap shooting. Archers, skirmish cav, any of that cheap shooting is was very, very petrified against Coast because they're all like the armor. They have very little armor as a faction. Pistol mobs having 130 range meant they could trade with skirmish cav very effectively and out trade skirmish cav. And Silostra's damn knight errant summon with lance formation meant that no archers were ever safe. That thing could route off three, four, or five archers in a single summon, and then by the time you got rid of it, Silostra was back and was doing it again. Now that those two things are gone, Coast is back in that same boat of they're just so, so weak to any kind of, of cheap shooting. On top of the fact that their melee grind got nerfed as well, with explosion damage nerfs, the animated hulk nerfs, they don't even trade as well in melee if they, if they are even managed to get there. They're still going to trade as well, so they're just going to really, really rough. What elves? What elves have felt okay? Um, not something I'm ever scared of in a tournament. Here, B. I think I'll go put it in B. Archers are still solid. Blade Singers and Treekin make for a viable melee rush if you, that's your angle as well, which does give them some options. They have the cheap archer, well, not cheap, but they have the, the good archers to outshoot a lot of the kiting factions, which means it's hard to kite them. Their melee rush is viable. They're solid. Their mobility is still a little overpriced. Blade Rider spears are fine, but Wild Riders are just tragically overpriced. They're like 1,200 and perform a little better than Sigor Centaurs, which are cost 700. Like, they're just such a, such a bad unit for their price. So their elite mobility, their mobility game is a little bit weak. Especially their elite mobility. Their infantry game, their front line is solid, their archers are solid, but their mobility game is pretty. Warriors of Chaos. Another one that got nerfed really heavily. I don't even know if I can remember all the nerfs. Bellicor, Elstriders, some of the infantry, I think. I don't remember what else got nerfed. Be, actually, the Hellstrider one's the big one. Because losing that dominant light mobility piece means if they want to fight for a mobility control. They need Chaos Knights, which are much more expensive and much less dominant. They're solid Cav, but they don't have armor piercing, which means they're they're fighting other elite Cav. They're usually going to lose. These Warriors of Chaos are in the same boat as Ornith Slanesh 
and Nurgle where they don't have the mobility elements to support the infantry engagement that you want because their infantry is still very very strong their trolls their monsters are all very very strong but their mobility is still quite weak they have a hard time getting their infantry where they want it to be without being abused along the way that said they have much more op many more options than corn slanesh and Nurgle etc just by virtue of the mark system as well as a much deeper roster so I think I will put them in B tier. But I can't feel good right about putting them a whole lot higher. They do have a lot of options. They could surprise us given more time to experiment. But for now, that's about where I've seen them performing in lately. So that is my tier list for patch, what is this, 3.0.1, I think? Yeah, for domination tournaments. So if you like it, if you found it helpful, please like, subscribe, all that jazz. See you next time.